Hey guys, this is Josh with the Adept Dave channel, and in this video, we're going to be discussing the much maligned Cat Bridge C15, the MBN serial number. Now, over the years, I've gotten emails from people saying, hey, I was looking at getting a truck, but it has an MBN in it. You know, I've heard they're pretty bad. And I usually tell people that, no, they're not pretty bad. They're a good engine. Are they as good as the predecessor, the 6NZ? No. But the 6NZ was great. The MBN is good. And usually I would just say it's basically a 6NZ with an electronic wastegate. And that's kind of true. So we're going to be digging into what are the differences between the 6NZ, C15, and the bridge, MBN. Now remember, the MBN was before they went to the A-cert with the two turbos. It's still a single turbo engine. So let's get into it. So why did they even make a bridge engine in the first place? When the 6NZ, which some people would consider to be the best truck engine ever made, I wouldn't go as far as that. I would say it is a great truck engine, possibly the best cat truck engine ever made. Why would they make the MBN? Well, the bridge engine, you have to remember, was right before 2004 when they first really started heavily regulating the truck engine emissions market on the heavy-duty trucks. And that's when the Acer technology came out. But before that, CAT needed a transition engine without modifying too many things. So they made the MBN. And it's called a bridge engine because it's bridging to the future or bridging off a cliff. And what it ended up being was basically... It's a 6NZ. If you looked at them and didn't know what you were looking for, you could probably wouldn't be able to tell any difference unless you noticed the electronic wastegate. Now, what's weird about it, though, is once you start digging into it, into the parts list, they did not just add an electronic wastegate. They changed a lot of stuff. First thing you would have noticed was the max horsepower available on the engines. The 6NZ could get up to 550 horsepower, 1850 torque from the factory. MBN... 525 horsepower, 1850 torque. So 25 less horsepower, okay, probably live with that. You may not notice that much of a difference. So let's go through the parts list and see what exactly is not the same on an MBN compared to a 6NZ. Now, just looking at the parts, you would not be able to tell the difference. There's physically no design changes between the parts. They run a 16.6 .6 compression ratio, it's still the same cylinder head design, valve train design, fuel system design. But CAT messed with almost everything that makes horsepower to try to get the emissions down on the MBN. And that's why a lot of people complain of high exhaust gas temperature and worse fuel economy. They just change so much to try to reduce the emissions. So injectors are different. MBN typically uses a 10R1000 injector, a 6NZ. 10R0956. The camshaft is different. 10R1534 for an MBN. 6NZ. 10R3292. These are reman numbers, obviously. The turbocharger is different. Now, I'm not going to read the parts list on each one. I'm just going to tell you what is different between them. The turbocharger is different. The cylinder head is actually the same. They are comparable between the 6NZ and the MBN. Cylinder packs are different. That means they change something with the piston design or the rod design. The crankshaft is the same, and the ECM can be the same between the two, depending on which 6NZ you're referring to. If you're referring to one of the early 6NZs, like 6NZ00001, it's not going to have the same ECM as the end of the 6NZ, you know, 6NZ999999. So... They changed injectors, camshaft, turbocharger, the even the cylinder pack. Of course, the flash file, all the electronics have changed as well. That's a lot of changes. So why did they have the bad reputation? Well, because the emissions stuff. And since they changed so much with the emissions, you're going to have different outcomes. It's not going to run as good as the 6NZ was. Now, can you just... Now, going on record here, I'm not advising you to do this, but could you just give it a 6NZ flash file and put a normal turbocharger on it or just run the wastegate from the exhaust side and you just have a 6NZ. Well, no, because what I just discussed, you would have different injectors, different camshaft. Everything would be different. Now, would it run better? It's hard to say. I don't really do with horsepower modifications that much. I do know several people that have basically turned their MBNs into 6NZs, though, by changing all those components to 6NZ components. Remember, the physical size of all these components 
is interchangeable. The cylinder head, the cylinder block, crankshaft are all the same. So you could, if you wanted to, I'm not advising this, swap all the parts from a 6NZ and basically turn it into a 6NZ and then just get rid of the electronic wastegate. Not telling you to do that. You would be breaking emissions regulations there. Just saying it could be done. But like I said, the MBN is not a horrible engine. I would say it's a good engine, but it's not a great engine like the 6NZ was. Now, if you sat all the way through this, hope you enjoy Destruction of the Week. Hey, Woodchuck Chuckers. This week's Destruction of the Week is a 2016 Peterbilt. Came in for an air leak, according to the driver. And uh, yeah, I work on new junk as well as old junk. And look, trying to get it fixed out in the yard here. Snowing, disgusting. Look at that. Those are all of the battery cables. Run out of the transmission here. It actually shorted out and cut through the PTO line. I'm amazed it didn't burn to the ground. Uh, driver had no idea about this. So needless to say, I got it in the shop as quickly as possible and disconnected the batteries. Had to get new battery cables. Thanks for watching.